In this example, we're told we have a vertical piston cylinder assembly. So let's sketch that out. So here's our cylinder. And we have a piston here. And it's vertical. So gravity is pointing down that way. And we're told that the piston has a mass of 25 kilograms. So the mass of the piston is 25 kilograms. And it has a face area of 0 0.005 square meters. So the area of the piston, this is the area going this way for the piston, is 0 0.005 square meters. And inside this assembly is air. The mass of the air, we're told, is 2.5 grams. So that's the mass of the air in here. And the air initially occupies a volume, so the initial volume of the air, we'll call it just V1, is 2.5 liters. The atmosphere exerts a pressure of 100 kilopascals on the top of the piston, so the pressure of the atmosphere up here is 100 kilopascals absolute. And the volume of the air slowly decreases to 0 0.001 cubic meters, so the final volume, V2, 0 0.001 cubic meters. As the energy, as energy with a magnitude of one kilojoules is slowly removed by heat transfer. So that means that there's some heat transfer coming out. So this is, the heat coming out is one kilojoule. Neglecting friction between the piston and the cylinder wall. So right in here, we'll neglect that friction. Determine the change in specific internal energy of the air. So we want to know how the specific internal energy of the air is changing through this whole process. So our system that we're going to be interested in is the air. So I'll put a dashed line to indicate that that's our system. And to find the change in the specific internal energy of the air, that makes me think that we're going to need to use the first law on the air because the first law involves internal energy. And so that, that's a way to find how that internal energy is changing. So let me write the first law for that system. So the change in total energy of the system is equal to the heat going into it minus the work done by the system. And actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, that's our normal way of writing the first law, but I'm going to change this first law. Instead of minus the work done by the system, which would be the work done by the air, I'm going to make it the plus the work done on the system. That, that'll just be a little more convenient for me to do this calculation because the, the, the reason I wanted, I, I decided to change it here is because when I think about the work being done on the air, the work that's going to be done on the air is due to the, the force that the piston is exerting on the air. So the piston is going to exert some force on that air, and that, that force is going to include the weight of the piston, so that'll be the mass of the piston times gravity. So that's exerting some force on the air. And then there's also some atmospheric pressure that's pushing down on the piston, which in turn pushes down on the air. So that'll, that'll be P atmosphere times the area of the piston. Sorry, it's all kind of jammed up in there. Maybe I can move some of it around. So we have these two forces, the weight of the piston acting on the air and the atmospheric pressure force acting on the piston, which in turn acts on the air. And so I, I see these forces acting on the air, so it makes me think that you know we're doing work on the air. And to get that work, of course, I'm going to have to to do a force dot product with a displacement. So these are the forces, and the displacement will be the downward movement of the piston. Okay, or the movement of the piston, I should say. So let's go ahead and expand out our first law expression. First of all, let's start with the easy one, the, chain, the, the heat transfer into the control volume. Well, here it's actually heat transfer coming out. So this will be a minus one kilojoule there. The change in total energy of the system will be the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy of our system. Now, since everything is moving slowly in here, there is no change in kinetic energy. That's zero. The change in potential energy, well, there will be some change in potential energy because if the piston's moving up or down, then the center of volume of the air is also moving up and down but it's not going to move a lot. We're not expecting, you know, 100 meters difference in the elevation of this piston. So the center of mass of the air is not going to change a whole lot. Plus the mass of air is very small, right? So 
that change in potential energy is going to be pretty tiny, so we'll just say it's about equal to zero. We'll neglect it. So that'll give us the change in the internal energy, which is pretty close to what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the change in the specific internal energy. So the change in internal energy will be the mass of the air times the change in the specific internal energy of the air. Right, so this is a capital U here. That's the change in the internal energy, but that's just the mass of our system, which in this case is the mass of the air, times the change in specific internal energy. So this is what we're trying to find, the, the delta little u here. Okay, so we're getting close. Now to find the work done on the air, I just mentioned a moment ago to find that, that's going to be the integral of the force acting on the air dot product with the small displacement as we go from some initial state to some final state. The force we just talked about as being the pressure force and the weight of the piston. So that'll be P atmosphere times the area of the piston plus the mass of the piston times gravity. That's all acting in, let's put a coordinate system here, and let's call this the Z direction pointing upward. And so that's all acting in the minus k hat direction because it's acting downward, right? These forces are acting down according to this. That's why I have a minus k hat there. And then it'll displace in some vertical direction. Call it dz. dz in the k hat direction. So it's it, the piston is moving up, up or down, right? So there's some small displacement there. And then it will go from some initial height to some final height, z1 and z2. So let me go ahead and expand that that will end up being, um, let's, that'll be, when we do the dot product, it'll just be k hat dot k hat, so that, that goes away, right? And the atmospheric pressure, area of the piston, the mass of the piston, and gravity, those are all constants, so th those can all come outside the integral, so let me move those around. So this will be minus p atmosphere, area of the piston face, plus the mass of the piston times gravity, integral, of dz time as we go from z1 to z2. So this will just be finally p atmosphere area of the piston plus m mass of the piston times gravity. Whole thing multiplied by delta z, just what the elevation change is. Okay? All right, so let's uh, expand this a little bit further. What we're going to do then is uh, I'm going to just multiply through by the delta Z here. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you look at the area of the piston times delta Z, that's like a change in volume, right? It's just the, the cross-sectional area of the piston face times the change in the elevation of it. That just sweeps out a volume. So this will just be minus P atmosphere times the change in volume. So that's why I wanted to expand it in that manner. Okay, and one last thing. I, I just want to continue to keep this in terms of volume. The, the delta Z here, I could write that, since I, since I know, let me write it up here. Since I know the change in volume is like the area of the piston, oops, area of the piston face times delta Z, I could just re rewrite delta Z as uh, change in volume all over the area of the piston. So finally, I could just rewrite this in the following way. Like that. And the reason I'm doing all this is because we're given the change in volume, right? If you go back up here and look at the problem statement, we're given an initial volume 2.5 liters, you can convert that over to cubic meters, and then the final volume, 0 0.001 cubic meters. So, so we know the initial and final volumes instead of the change in elevation. So that's why I wanted to put everything in terms of change in volume. We know all the rest of this information. We know the atmospheric pressure is 100 kilopascals absolute. We know the mass of the piston that was 25 kilograms. We know gravity, of course, 9.81 meters per second squared. We know the area of the piston face that was given is 0 0.005 square meters. And then we know the change in volume 
is going from our 0 0.001 cubic meters minus the 2.5 liters. Of course, there's some unit conversions you'd have to do, but we know all of that information, right? So we can go ahead and do that calculation. And once we do that, we can then also, so I, I didn't actually plug in the numbers to figure out what the work done on was separately, but we can do that calculation. We have all the numbers. So we can plug that into here. We know the heat transfer term, and we know the mass of the air over here. That, that This mass of the air was 2.5 grams. So in all of this, we could then solve for the change in the specific internal energy of the air. And when it's all said and done, it comes out to be minus 311 kilojoules per kilogram. So I apologize, I didn't actually work out this intermediate step, but you could do that um, without too much trouble. Okay, so just to kind of, oh, I guess I did um, work it out. I just, I'm looking at my notes here. I worked this out and it did come out to be uh, 224 joules when you plug in the numbers. So I did work that out. I just didn't see it on my notes. Okay, so this is a problem involving the first law of thermodynamics. The hardest part, for sure, is, is evaluating the work done on the air here. Uh, you don't have to work it that way. I just think it's an easier way for me to understand it. But the work done on the air was just the force acting on the air, dot product with the displacement. And then uh, the rest of this is just, I put it all in terms of volume. So that's what most of this is, is just converting everything into change in volume. All right, I think we have everything we need for this problem, so we'll end it there.